Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. May he lift up his countenance to you and give you perfect peace. And so this morning, I just was reading in my Bible, reading in Luke, and um, just falling more in love with Jesus every single day. You know, um, it, he talked about how, you know, brother will hate brother and mother will turn against, you know, relative. And he says, but... Um, there's going to be earthquakes and famines and plagues and wars and rumors of wars. But take heart because the end won't happen yet. Um, but not one hair of your head will um, fall without me knowing it. And I thought of three people that I know and love who've been losing their hair recently. Christina Wolf, who has cancer. Um, Erica Ferrer, who's dealing with um, post-COVID. And then my cousin Priscilla, who's also dealing with post-COVID and some other health issues. And so, you know, as a woman, we, um, women in general, we value our hair, you know, and, and dyeing it and cutting it and combing it and braiding it and all of those things. You know, I think that one of the most precious things about raising a little girl is at those special moments when you get to comb their hair, wash them and bathe them and buy that Johnson and Johnson detangler spray to help comb through the tangles. And then I think of girls that have curly hair and they have various um, struggles with that but uh, it says that not one hair will fall off your head that he didn't know it and so today marks four months since Tim Kruger our beautiful friend went to heaven and I think about how Tim battled cancer and actually he didn't lose his hair from his chemo and radiation but he went to heaven on January 1 and so we go through trials and I think that sometimes we can take scriptures out of context and think oh well not one hair will fall off your head that God doesn't know it well, uh, either God is cruel and he let me lose my hair, you know, for those that have battled cancer or um, God, God allowed it and he sees the hair fall off my head and he's, he's cruel. So either he allowed it and he's cruel or he doesn't have the power to heal me. And both of those are false. God is not cruel. God is a loving God, a gracious God, so to anger and rich in love. But just like Jesus endured the cross and he endured pain and suffering on this side of heaven, we're going to endure pain and suffering too. And so we have to remember that God is mindful. He's mindful of our pain. He's mindful of our tears. He's mindful of our troubling circumstances. And yet he loves us and he sees us and he weeps with us and he holds us up. You know, I have a special prayer that I pray often where I just say, Lord, I need your touch right now. I need your help. I'm mush. And I just think of a pulp, you know, like an orange pulp. You know, we all have those um, orange juicers where you take the orange and you put it and you just squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it. And so, you know, the beautiful juice comes out, the tasty orange juice comes out. But then you have a pulp or you have this mush that's good for nothing. It's not sweet anymore. It's dry you know, it's um, actually quite bitter. And so sometimes when we're going through our trials and we're being squished to a pulp, we can get bitter. But the juice is really not for us to drink. The juice, the juice is for others. So I, I, the Lord reminded me of that before, that when you step on a, um, a grape and then the juice comes out and the aroma comes out or you squish an orange or a lemon or even an apple, the aroma comes out in the pressing. And so Jesus went to the through the wine press and we will too. Jesus was crushed and we will too. But what does the scripture say? Crushed down but not destroyed. We're going to be crushed. We're going to go through trials and pain and pressing and squishing. And we are going to feel like mush. But we're going through the fire. We will not be burned. We're going through the waters. We will not drown. And so Lord, I thank you for that beautiful reminder. God, we go through trials and testing and hardships. We do feel like mush. We do feel like a pulp. We do feel like a stump. But we know that you're bringing something beautiful out of it. It doesn't make sense in the moment, but we can trust you in it. We can trust you when we're in the fire. We can trust you when we're in that raging water. We can trust you when we're on that, um, that juice machine, you know, that you're going to produce new wine out of us. You're going to produce fragrant uh, olive oil, fragrant perfume through our trials, through our tests. So God, I have so many people that have been losing their hair and I do, do want to pray for those battling leukemia, battling cancer, battling blood disorders, battling um, Lyme's disease, 
autoimmune disease, MS, so many different trials um, that crush us, autism, Parkinson's, dementia, but God, you're, we are more than conquerors in you. And I know that that's true. I don't feel like a conqueror. I feel like a little weakling, but it's not true. Um, your word says that we're more than conquerors. And I know that is true. Your word is true. Your word is life and light. Your word is hope. You are our living hope, God. Thank you for being the one that conquered the grave. Thank you for being the one that crushed the ser serpent's head. And what a beautiful contrast. We might be crushed on this life, but Satan was crushed eternally. Eternally crushed and totally destroyed. And so he's been released for a little bit of a time. But one day we're going to be in heaven and the former things will pass away. And you said, behold, I make all things new. And I thank you for that. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for carrying us and walking us through the valley of the shadow of death. I pray for the Cougar family this morning as they're mourning and grieving. I pray for Vivian Regay as this Mother's Day, this next Sunday will be um, her first without her mom. Her mom passed away. And for many missing their moms, it's a very depressing day. It's crazy how the enemy loves to rob joy. And so on a day that's supposed to be so wonderful and beautiful, Mother's Day, can be so cruel and crushing and painful for those who don't have a mother for those who were abandoned by their mother for those who were mistreated by their mother or whose mother is in heaven even thinking of amy clark as her grandma just passed away comfort her and her mom and her sister and all of the family lord and i just pray for church this morning i thank you for sunday morning service god i thank you for these beautiful birdies singing all around it's springtime here in california springtime all over the world although seasons are different some places it's snowing here in california it's sunny and beautiful and warm and so god we just thank you that um you are the resurrection and the life you are the way the truth and the life you are our high tower you are our rock of refuge you are our defense you are our strength holy spirit armor us up may we put on the full armor the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the gospel shoes, the armor of God, the um, sword of the spirit, um, and the glue of prayer. Every single piece of the armor, would you affix it on us, God, that we would not walk out of the house naked, spiritually naked, and not ready because the battle is raging and it's there. Whether we choose to believe it or not, it's true. It's true that we live in a war. We live in a battlefield. Um, I pray, Father, for the homeless. I, there's a man that's homeless nearby. I pray for him, Jesus, as he's just asleep right now. It's 8.30 a.m. and so many families are waking up, having their coffee, making breakfast, um, making their beds. And this man's bed is right here on the grass. And it just reminds me of how you, Jesus, slept under the stars many a nights. And so homeless people have more in common with you than they might realize. Because you said the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Foxes have... Um, holes and the birds of the fields have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head so Jesus would you make would our hearts be a home for you would our hearts be a pillow for you would our hearts be a place where you make your home in us God use our lives for your glory I pray for that sister in Christ Carmen that I met with recently I lift her up to you Jesus I pray that you would help her to pass this bar exam Lord I know that she's distraught and fearful and anxious and upset that she didn't pass but I know God that you can help her leap over that wall of that exam I thank you for Kimmy Tillman as she was able to speak at her church this weekend I saw a video of her and it just blessed my heart I want to pray for Erica Ferrer and her health issues. I pray for my cousin Priscilla that you would touch her and minister to her, that she would not need more surgeries, God. I pray for Constance, Glenda's daughter. I pray for all of the sick and the weak and the weary. And I pray for the prodigals, Lord, for Barbara's daughter, for Grace's daughter, for my brother Anthony, for all my nieces, Jesus, Tishy, Manda, Nikki, Lauren, Nisa. Um, Julie Mac Maddox, I pray for all of them, God. I pray for those children that are walking strongly with you, that they are solid, God. They're like um, iron men and iron women. They're running this race with endurance. They're beautiful examples, God. I think of my little beautiful daughter, Olivia. I think of all of those um, children, pastor's kids and worship leader's kids and 
um, those that were raised with godly moms and dads that are still serving you. I praise you and thank you for them, God. And I ask that you would keep them strong, that you would keep them close to your heart, that they would not go to the right or to the left. It's so easy to do that. When I was in swimming, I would often hit those um, the rope on the side. I wasn't very good at staying straight. I would go off course when I would swim. I wasn't very good at swimming, but you allowed me to be on that swim team. And I always remember how I would close my eyes and, and I would swim. Even though I had the goggles on, I would still close my eyes and I would start um, drifting. And I don't want to drift in my walk and in my life with you. So I pray for those strong Christians, even those praying with me right now. I pray for each one of their individual walks, God, that they would walk with you, that they would cling tightly to you, that they would never leave their first love, which is you, Jesus. We don't want to be like the latter of sea in church that's spewed out of your mouth because they're lukewarm. We want to be fired up for you, God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, there's so many things that we need to repent of in our culture, in our nation, in our own hearts. Father, this horrible, sickening AB2223, would you strike it down? I know on May 4th, just in a few more days, there's going to be a, um, a vote on it or something. I don't know the political term, but I just pray against this terrible, terrible, awful law that they would kill babies, Lord. I know in the Old Testament, they tried to murder Moses and they killed tons of Israelites. Um, they tried to kill Jesus and they killed tons of babies. They tried to kill, um, they killed and slaughtered babies. You see it in scripture. They would sacrifice their babies to Moloch. And I often think in our cult culture, we sacrifice babies to the corporate system and needing a job. And we sacrifice babies to wanting to get ahead in life. And we sacrifice babies to inconvenience, the God of convenience. And it's just horrific. So please, God, don't let this law continue on. I thank you for Pastor Jack Hibbs and so many pastors that are just doing bold things to say, no, this is not right. I pray for Victor Marks. I pray for all the mighty warriors, Lord. This month, May, is Mother's Day. This month, May, is also um, Memorial Day. And may we remember moms and may, who are warriors in the home. And may we remember our veterans and those that have died. May we remember them and not forget God. I want to pray for the marriages this morning, God, for the godly husbands and wives, the men that will pray with their wives and read the Bible with them. I thank you for them, God. I bless you for godly um, couples that are serving you, that love you, that worship you in spirit and in truth. Pastor Joe and Diane, so many couples that are godly and that serve you and that worship you and do ministry and serve the body of Christ. Bless them, bless them, God, a hundredfold. Thank you for my husband, Lord. Bless him, God. Be with him as he ministers and serves so many people and in so many ways, God. And as the school year's winding down and there's kids graduating from high school and college and graduate school, there's um, people studying for finals and midterm, uh, not midterms, final exams, and just trying to hurry up and, and wrap up their year, whether it's high school, elementary, um, promoting, or college and I just pray that you would be with them father be with Todd my friend Rhonda asked for prayers for her son Todd who goes to Biola I lift him up to you God and I just thank you for hearing our prayers Lord you are the God that listens you bend down your ear and you listen to our prayers and it just blows my mind that you are so tender and welcoming you welcome us May we welcome you into our daily lives, God. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we just thank you for being our God, our rock, our king. In Jesus' name, amen. Her. Ready to go? Ready to go to church? Let's go. Sleepy. No, this way. Go to church. Sleepy. Yeah, she's sleepy. <laughs>